Welcome back fans of all things Disney and even though this was a delayed video this is our day seven video from our subscriber Bonanza I will apologize wholeheartedly for the delay um, I did not realize quite a few things about vlogging um, the first one being it is a lot harder than it looks and because of that the second thing would be it takes forever to try to edit and piece together um, a vlog so it has certainly taken a lot longer and normally uh, or at least my plan would have been to just simply go ahead and have it be a complete vlog but we've got missing pieces and there's audio issues here and there so instead of me focusing in on the vlog elements that I did when we were at the food and wine festival instead I would rather just kind of share with you the different things that we had um, walk through using the passport and then if you decide that you want to stay around and see the most ridiculous attempt at vlogging you will have ever seen in your life um, I'm gonna throw together you know what I was able to piece together for you towards the end of this it will not hurt my feelings and it, it certainly would actually make me feel a little bit better if you didn't watch it but you know whatever whatever full transparency I said we were gonna try it so we tried it so what I will tell you is this the food and wine festival at Disney's Epcot is fantastic. I think it is one of my absolute new favorite events. Well, probably until the next new event comes up, but right now I'm loving it. I'm loving everything about food and wine festival. It was a great experience. It started off, um, I was able to spend just a little bit of time there myself, just kind of wandering around, getting a feel for everything. My husband is not a fan of crowds. He gets very angry sometimes around crowds. So I try to do as much exploring as I can either online or in person individually before I walk him into a situation like that. So that Saturday afternoon, I was able to spend a couple hours there before my husband uh, was able to get out of work. So I was able to just, you know, get a sense for the way everything went. Um, the crowds were not terrible Saturday afternoon, even though it was the opening weekend, it was Labor Day weekend. I was a little surprised that in the afternoon, the crowds weren't terrible, but, um, in the evening they were atrocious they were they were really really quite bad and I don't mind crowds and I was I was ready to leave and we packed it in very early I would say that we left uh, food and wine I would say we left by eight o'clock so for me to leave before fireworks and all of that you know that the crowds are pretty intense so um, I've also because of the annual pass I've also gotten to the point where as soon as I stop enjoying myself what's the point right you you go to Disney to enjoy yourself and if there's any element of it that's just stressing you out beyond belief you just have to go ahead and, and make your way out of the park so the annual pass allows us to do that with all of that said um, they give out these little passport books when you first walk in and thank goodness that they do because a few drinks in I don't know that I would have necessarily remembered every single thing that I tried there so I'm just gonna walk you through um, some of the different experiences just in case you are on your way to the food and wine festival yourself or if it's something that you kind of have always wanted to do if you're anything like me I scoured all of the previous food and wine uh, videos that people had put up just to get little tips and tricks and things like that so uh, one of the first things that I ended up doing is I went over to the festival center and I picked up my annual pass holder magnet which is adorable and I'm gonna actually I'll put that in the the haul video from the weekend so you can see it but it really is I mean it's just it's adorable so I was able to pick that one up and while I was there I stopped at this shimmering sips mimosa bar I'm a huge fan of mimosas to begin with and they had all different kinds but the one that I tried was the Madras mimosa it was um, sparkling cranberry wine I believe it was and some orange juice and it was just absolutely wonderful a little for the amount that you got I thought it was maybe a little bit pricey but considering it was Disney it wasn't you know it wasn't out of the realm of um, what you might expect and I really did enjoy that so I'm I think I'm probably gonna go back to shimmering sips on another visit and just try one of the other ones um, they have a key lime mimosa that I was tempted to get and I didn't that this last time so maybe I'll get it the next time um, 
the following day, my husband and I went to the Festival Center together and he wanted to try one of the beer flights. So we got um, the first beer flight and it had, let's see here, it was a Central 28 Waffle, um, a Bull City Brewing, Brewing 1901 Roasted Red Ale, and then the Florida Beer Company Passport Triple Chocolate Milk Stout. I don't like beer at all to begin with. My husband likes light beers and truthfully none of those would qualify as a light beer. So he didn't mind the first two, but the chocolate milk stout was not good. I'm sure it would be wonderful if you liked chocolate beer, chocolate flavored beer. But since I don't like beer at all, I love chocolate, but I don't like beer at all. There was no way I was gonna drink that. And my husband's not a fan of chocolate in any way, shape, or form. So I still don't understand why he picked that particular beer flight. I think he just went because it was probably the easiest to pick. But um, we tried it and we marked it down. And I'm sure that they are all lovely beers if you happen to like those flavors. But that one chocolate one, he was not a fan of. The first day, I went to uh, one of the next eats kiosks that they had their little um pavilion coastal eats and i have to tell you what did i get i got the lump nope not the lump crab cake i got the seared scallops with roasted corn and butter bean succotash and chili chipotle butter sauce and it it was really phenomenal in fact i'm thinking towards the end of the food and wine festival when i go back for the run I think I will probably treat myself to that one again because it was absolutely delicious. I, th I thought that the scallops were cooked perfectly. They were nice and tender. They weren't chewy, um, but they were very tender. And that, that butter sauce that they had on there was just absolutely wonderful. I loved it. Not a huge fan of succotash either, and I really did enjoy that. Then later that same day, I treated myself to, let's see here, the Twinnings Pumpkin Spice Chai Tea Frozen Cocktail with Caramel Vodka. And it, it looked like they put quite a bit of vodka in that, which is lovely, but um, it was really good. It was really, really tasty, I have to say. Um, I don't think I'll get it again, but it was, it was really good. I'm glad I got it the first time. Um, so it, it's definitely something if you like chocolate tasting, uh, shakes and um, if you don't mind a little bit of vodka with your shake it, it was definitely amazing um, the next day this is something that I will absolutely get and I got this Saturday just right around noon so it was really hot and I was just I really wanted something just very very smooth and um, kind of cool the temperature down a little bit so we stopped at the almond orchard and I got the banana almond soft serve sundae with fresh berries and chocolate almond streusel. Outstanding. It was outstanding. The portion size for what you paid, and I think it was like $4.50 or $5, but it was a really nice size sundae. The um, banana soft serve was amazing. I will absolutely get that one again. Um, and the toppings just fit beautifully with it. So that I would highly recommend and I will absolutely get that one for myself. The first night that we were there, that Saturday night, my husband and I stopped in Thailand. And let's see here, we got a, a few different things. Um, we got the marinated chicken with peanut sauce and stir fried vegetables. And we also got the seared shrimp and scallop cake with cold noodle salad. I thought that the marinated chicken with the peanut sauce was good. I thought it was very tasty for what it was, but that seared shrimp and scallop cake was amazing. It was absolutely delicious. That cold noodle salad, I don't know what kind of sauce they put on that thing, but it was amazing. I would have taken a whole plate of that if possible. It was absolutely fantastic. And then my husband did get one of the I'm gonna mispronounce it, but it was the lager that they had there, a Sing, Singha lager. I'm, I'm so sorry if I completely butchered that, but he liked it, but um, again, he's, you know, give him a, a Bush Light or a Coors Light or something like that, and he's a happy man. So anything that's a, a little bit uh, fancier, he's, he's not as down for it. 
Then, let's see here. Let's see, see, see. Um, the first night, we also stopped at Spain, at the Spain Pavilion. And I tried the charcuterie in a cone because it just looked really interesting. I'd seen other people get it. And to be quite honest, I thought my husband would want more of it than he took. And I knew that he wasn't getting enough food with the, the portions are so, so tiny. So um, I figured that he would enjoy that. But he actually, he got the seafood salad with the shrimp base scallops and mussels. Um, and he, he thought that that was very, very bland. I tried it myself. I think I agree that it was quite bland. Um, but I'm not a huge seafood salad person. So I don't know that I would be the right person to ask. Um, but he is, and he he was not a fan. He didn't dislike it, but he didn't like it. Um, the charcuterie in a cone, I thought was great, actually. I will get that one again if I, you know, I'm walking by there and I just, I want a little bit of cheese, a little bit of the meat. I want, you know, some of the olives in there. For the price that you pay, I thought that it was really, really good. I also ended up trying the wine flight that they have there, and I liked every one of the wines that came in that wine flight. The white wine that was part of it was one that I really wanted to purchase. And this is something that I found out um, at the Food and Wine Festival is that they don't sell the wines that are part of the flights. And that doesn't make sense that you can't find one that you like and then purchase a bottle of it to take home with you. So I don't know. That would be something that if I could make a suggestion to whoever's listening that it might make it a little bit better. Then let's see, we also ate in Japan that first night. I had the teriyaki chicken bun and my husband had the beef nigiri. The teriyaki chicken bun, amazing. I want to get that again at least one more time when we are there. And then uh, the beef nigiri, he was not a fan of, didn't dislike it, but he didn't really like the spice that was, um, uh, the spicy rice that came with it, which is strange because he loves spice. And I didn't care for it either. But I'm, I'm very proud of myself for trying a couple of things in the France Pavilion. My husband got the carbon, I'm going to mix it up. I'm the carbonade de bouffe. <laughs> Sorry for the pronunciation. That was good. Um, I got the croissant au escargot and I took one bite of it and I couldn't finish it. So we traded. My husband loved the croissant. He thought it was great. He likes snails. That kind of stuff doesn't bother him. I tried it because I just wanted to try it and I, I was not a fan. I'm sure it was lovely and beautifully made for what it was, but I couldn't get past, I tried. I just, I couldn't get past the snail. I just couldn't get past it. So um, the Canada Pavilion, amazing. The Canadian cheddar cheese and bacon soup with the pretzel roll to dip in the soup, outstanding. I will absolutely get that again. And I also found a beer that I do like. I am not a fan of beer, like I said, but I tried this um, Moosehead Rattler that they had there. And if I could have bought a case of that stuff, I would have bought it because it was fantastic. It was a very fruity beer with grapefruit and grapes and all this kind of stuff in it. And I really, really loved that, so two thumbs up way way up for the food and wine festival it was a great experience i will absolutely do it again if you would like to participate in our uh, giveaway that we are doing our little contest please just like the video subscribe to the channel if you'd be ever so kind and also i'll leave a comment below and that will be your entry to the video so until our next video be blessed and bye bye Welcome back again, fans of all things Disney. Today is the day. Today is the day that I get to experience the Food and Wine Festival for the very, very first time. I am so excited. I have the appropriate ears on, and I just picked up my Food and Wine Festival passport, which I'll show you a little bit of a close-up on in just a minute. I have a little bit of time before my husband gets out of work today, so I'm gonna go ahead and explore at my pace, and please feel free to come along for the ride. Okay, so I had my first experience here at the Food and Wine Festival. I stopped off at the Canada Pavilion first and I grabbed that famous cheddar and bacon soup with their pretzel roll. And I have to tell you, it was amazing. I will absolutely get that again, probably more than once. It was so good. And I also tried, even though I'm not a beer drinker, I also tried the Moosehead Rattler. 
and I have to say that was also delicious. If they have some here to purchase, I might have to do it.